Welcome back, everybody, to the King of Games 92. We are in the round of 16. We've had four matches so far for the play-in. A lot of those games in our 13 through 20 seeds have battled it out, and now they are here in the round of 16, taking on, I guess you would call the main course, especially in this situation. As you have seen on the episode title, I am sure, this episode is going to be our number one seed, Zelda, A Link to the Past, and our 20th seed, Dune 2, which, even if you're playing chalk, should not have made it here, but it did. I am excited that we have such a crazy matchup for you today. The number one game against our absolute bottom seed, which is, I guess, appropriate. And I have two fantastic podcasters with me here today making their King of Games debut. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce from the Gaming Memories podcast, Cade Call. Cade, how are you doing today? My body is ready. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm glad to hear that you are ready. <laughs> I'm ready to defend... The bottom seat. I love a good underdog. I'm here for the underdog. Okay, we'll see if we'll see if Dune Two sold more copies than Ultima. Then. <laughs> <laughs> I, it didn't. I looked. <laughs> but there's more than just sales. If it was just about sales, Taylor Swift would be the greatest thing that ever ever happened to music. And we all know that's not the case. Some people think it is, and some people might be wrong. Uh, speaking of people who love Taylor Swift, well, maybe you don't, <laughs> but I'm just going to say you do. From the Still Loading Podcast, Josh Koval. I take offense to that. Taylor Swift? <laughs> Taylor T. T. Swift? T. Hey, Swizzle? What she's is the this? queen. I like some of her songs quite a bit. No, her songs frank. aren't bad. I, I'm just not, I'm not, I don't listen to her music all that often. But hello, everyone. Yes, I am Josh from the Still Loading Podcast, and uh, my body is also ready. I guess all our bodies are ready then. We're just, we're <laughs> regging this. We're playing with our Wii's or Wii Motes, just. You know, you, waggling it, waggle physics. He did just tell me that he finds men with short hair more attractive. I do. So. I do. I'm not going to deny it. Yeah, Kay did cut off his lovely locks. Just for me, too. It, not a lot of people know that. It was just for me. It was That's some behind-the-scenes <laughs> stuff there. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Whoa. I, I, wow, I'm, I'm surprised right. I sold that. <laughs> I mean, yes, that's exactly so, why he did it. Uh, I know. He loves you. <laughs> but uh, in the King of Games 92, <laughs> as we're getting onto this competition, so to speak, uh, we like to talk about two games and we put them head to head and we determine who's going to move on to the next round. But in the first half of this episode, we are going to be discussing these games. Just what kind of games they these were, just generally what we kind of think about the game and related to ourselves in the time period. And we're going to start this out with... Zelda, A Link to the Past, is, again, this is our number one seed, and it was released on April 13th, 1992, obviously, in North America. It was developed by Nintendo Edadic, I'm sorry, EAD, <laughs> and published by Nintendo. It has a game rankings aggregate of 93%, and I've been using GameFAQs to kind of get a, a modern take on what these rankings are. Uh, so retrospective and the critic score, uh, all the critic scores is tallying has a 4.67 out of five, which is really high. Uh, and a user score of 4.56 out of five. Also high uh, critics are 16 reviews. Users are 7,881. So that's a lot of users to sample for how they're rating it. Contemporaneous scores back in 1992. Famitsu gave it a 39 out of 40, an almost perfect score. EGM gave it a 35 out of 40. GamePro gave it a perfect five out of five like they do almost every other game. <laughs> SNES Force 93, uh, whatever they are. And I'll just go with Nintendo Power Gate of a 4.675 out of 5. That's a lot of decimal places, I know, even for Nintendo Power. <laughs> uh, in terms of sales, it's 4.6 million worldwide, which makes it the seventh best selling Super Nintendo game ever. Uh, it was included in some bundles, so that needs to be said. It is the third best selling video game of 1992 in North America, and it's only behind Street Fighter 2 and Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Got a lot of game of the year for that year. Also has been listed as the best game of all time by several publications. Uh, it's been ported to fucking everything. Uh, this is, at this time, before I give my own thoughts, I'll step aside because I've been talking quite a bit, and I'll turn it over to Josh. Can you briefly tell me what you think about... Zelda: a Link to the Past. Uh, well, a Link to the Past is, uh, I mean, it's it's. I'm trying not to go into some of the things that we're going to be talking about later, but 
uh, I mean, Link to the Past is just an amazing game. Like it's it. I I didn't grow up with it, but it is something that I truly loved playing when I when I came to it many years later. It was. I actually had a bit of a chip on my shoulder about it beforehand because my one friend would always make fun of it. He's like, oh, it's, you know, Ocarina of Time, that's an awful game. Link to the Past, that's sort of, he would. He likes to troll people. He purposely likes to rile up Zelda fans by telling them that Ocarina of Time is awful, awful and Wind Waker is awful. He actually has a copy of Wind Waker that's still sealed. Just And so he just does it literally to troll people. He's never even played Wind Waker. He just does it to troll people. So my memories leading into playing this for the first time was one of my friend, my friend Jamie actually, who would just troll me incessantly, just talking about how every Zelda game is trash compared to Link to the Past, even though he's only played like two or maybe three. Uh, so I had a bit of a chip on my shoulder going into it for that reason. I kind of wanted, I went into it with the, with the idea of like, well, I'm going to prove this motherfucker wrong. You know, he, there's no way like he can be right. I, I'm, I got to find flaws in this game. And, you know, I'm sure if I, I really think about it, I'm sure there's a couple that come to mind, but I ended up really loving it. This game was a ton of fun to play and, uh, it's just I don't know I don't know what else to say it's fantastic uh, yeah I mean this is definitely a game when it came out in the Super Nintendo I'm sure a lot of people were looking forward to it, it as the follow up to the Nintendo game obviously and it went back to a top down view because it went to Zelda 2 which was kind of a side scroller adventure game but that, that also had some top down elements but not you know what I mean like it was going back to the very traditional method of playing Zelda yeah yeah the weird thing about this game for me is I don't remember when this game was released. I knew it was out. Like, it was kind of synonymous with the Nintendo. It was almost ubiquitous with it. But I didn't have the game. And I, I remember being more excited about Super Mario World and a lot of other games this year. I know that's not the case for everybody. Certainly not. I mean, it sold a lot of copies. So we we know that's there. But you're talking about a game that took the Zelda formula, the first game, and made it much more linear like the second game and provided more of a streamlined experience. You know, now now you have a town full of people. Now you have a big open map that kind of tells you where to go. Uh, you have more moves than just striking your sword. You still have all the items that you had in the first game and, and, and then some. So it really expanded on the original formula, but it did provide more of a linear one. In addition to having a, a second world to explore, almost like an upside down castle, if you want to say in the Castlevania route, but it did it. You know, almost uh, five years before Castlevania really made that a notable thing. So Zelda was one of those games. I mean, you still hear a lot of people talk about it. It's on the tip of everybody's tongue when you hear Super Nintendo. There's there's no denying that it definitely left a mark in many people's minds critically. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I, definitely when we start comparing it, I'll, I'll go deeper into it. But in terms of like just playing it, I, I, I played it when it came out on the Wii U. And I just, I don't know. I don't want to get too deep into it. But it just feels like one of those games that is that is important for the sake of being important. Well, it very much is a game that it showed, it really truly showed what happens when you can take a concept and upgrade it with more hardware. A lot, you know, some game developers, yeah. it their their way of doing so, it's one of those things where you when you take a game and you take a concept and you try to enhance it with new hardware, it can go great or it can go bad. And you know, sometimes they they take all the wrong lessons from the original game or they they tried to do they try to expand it in a cheap way if that makes sense like yeah I'm, I'm trying to think of a good example but at least at least for this one I thought ego Raptor the you uh, you know that one half of game grumps I thought he made a very good point about this game where the original Z Legend of Zelda is very much like uh just it's it's I mean it's a literal open world you can do anything you want you can go anywhere you want it's it's left up to the player to choose where they want to go with a link to the past it's a lot more like a theme park it's a lot like disneyland where they have these maps guiding you to different locations you can explore the park to a to some extent but it still is a much more guided experience and it directs the players in specific ways that the first game didn't really hold your hand at all you, i mean theoretically if you if you don't even know what you're doing you will miss the sword in the first game because you don't have like if you don't if you decide to not walk into that top cave there on the first screen then some players probably started never even got the sword with a yeah. uh, link to the past it guides you directly to your sword like right off the bat like there's i mean there's guards all around the area and they're not attacking you they, they're not taken over by what's his face acronym or whatever and so they 
got like the only way you can go is to the castle. Like that's literally the only way you can go unless you know how to hack your way, like or like glitch your way out of bounds. And then it takes you to that bush, and the the bush like it, it takes you to a dead end. So unless you start ex- figuring out and exploring, like oh, I can pick up bushes, then you find out that conspicuously placed bush on around this square of tiles or whatever. And so you know it guides you the whole way through. And I think that's kind of like what they did with this. They kind of took the, the it's interesting where they they took away the exploration element to an extent. But or they, they they didn't take it away. They limited it. But they were by by limiting the exploration and link to the past. They were able to expand so many more ideas. It's uh basically the Metroid. It's the Metroidvania formula applied to top down action RPG. Whereas the first game was just sort of open. There was no there's no hindrance to progress. You can go anywhere really. The Metroidvania formula is you can't go through this wall until you get the ball. And then once you get the ball, it opens up a few places you can backtrack to. Now you can access a few more areas. And the map opens up as you get more abilities. Link to the Past does the same thing. They applied that to the top-down formula with better hardware, and it was awesome. And that bush you speak of, as a dumb little 12-year-old or however old I was, (laughs) it took me way longer than I want to admit how to find that bush and get down and start the game. Zelda puzzles and Zelda logic take a bizarre... like you. It's a. It's almost. You know how some people say like drinking beer is an acquired taste. Well, playing Zelda is an acquired skill. It's something where it's just you have to play through them and struggle through them until you understand how Zelda logic works. But once you understand how Zelda logic works, then it's easy to solve a lot of the puzzles. But the first time <laughs> you do it, it's very like I remember. Um, was it playing Oc- Ocarina of Time? Was my first Zelda, and I remember I couldn't find the fucking sword. I had no mm-hmm. idea where the sword was in Kokiri Village. It now, when I play Zelda games, I get it, but I actually needed someone to tell me, like, oh, you crawl through this random hole, which the first time I tried doing that, it wouldn't let me in. I don't know if I was lined up with it right, so I assumed I, I couldn't do anything there. But, I mean, that's, you know, that's where you have to go. But Zelda Zelda games are interesting in that people who don't play Zelda games, it takes a little bit of time before they can get used to the Zelda logic of it all. Fair point. So, Kay, did you play this game when it first came out in 92 or, or around that time period? It would be around that time period. What you were saying earlier about how you didn't know when it came out, I have a suspicion if we had the numbers of the first year, the first six months handy, I think that game built momentum. I don't think it was a huge splash because word mm-hmm. of mouth got around. Um, I was a Sega kid, and then people started talking about this Super Nintendo game that's better than anything on Sega, and then I went over to my friend Brad DeGaring's house. So I was maybe 93, could have been 94. I don't know how long it took, but I do remember playing it as a kid. I didn't, I didn't play it later. It was my first Zelda game that I beat. I played Zelda 1 on the NES, but I was too dumb. I couldn't beat it. Zelda 2 I skipped because I was angry about the side-scroller, and then Link to the Past I did eventually beat before I played Ocarina. And the Dark World flip, Thinking I got the first three pendants, game's almost over. They flipped the script on me. There's seven more dungeons. Amazing. Hmm. Legendary for the time. I can't think of a game that did that before Link to the Past. I'm sure there is one, but not the one that I'm aware of. Not at the top of my head. I mean, I didn't research anything like that, but you, you could be at least on a mainstream scale. In a mainstream scale, for sure. That's what I was going to say. You can make the argument it's the first one that did it on a mainstream level, but obviously you never really know until you start really diving. I mean, that's such a specific thing, too. That would, that would be a weird thing to try to figure out. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. All right, so let's move over to Dune 2. And <laughs> we went over the numbers for, for Dune 2 <laughs> last last time. So I'm going to be really, really brief here. So just to briefly go over this brief synopsis, this was released in December, no specific date for the PC, developed by Westwood Studios, published by Virgin Games, has a uh, contemporaneous score, can only find one electronic games ninety of uh, 92, has a user score of 4.15 of 91 users from GameFAQs for retrospective. And uh, again, if you want to hear all the awards and all the stuff it got of that year for PC, and go back to the previous episode, I just will, for the sake of this episode, say that uh, in terms of sales, not quite 4.6 million, just about, uh, you know, 250,000 uh, by November of 1996. So that's probably all it really sold, considering all the other things that were out by that point. As we pointed out in the previous episode, but it needs to be pointed out again, uh, this game is considered to be the progenitor of the real-time strategy genre. Now, 
I'm going to start this off with Josh again, because he has a fantastic series on the real-time strategy genre over there on the Still Loading podcast. So he's done quite a bit of research. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to take a back seat, turn over to Josh and let the discussion go between you and Cade. But briefly, just go over Dune 2, what it meant to you, what it meant to the RTS genre. So Dune 2, like you like you said, it's it's arguably the progenitor of the RTS genre, which I would say it is 100%, even though some the the other game that's credited that is Herzog's Vi and Herzog that was actually given that title I believe by IGN like a bunch of years ago I think when I was doing research for the series I think it was IGN I'd have to double check my notes on it but yeah like doing my history of RTS games a lot of games that led up to this had a lot of concepts that you'd be surprised kind of existed even in older games but dune 2 was the first one that really feels like when people think of rts now they think of starcraft they think of warcraft they think of age of command Empires, and conquer command and conquer yes what i mean there yeah command and conquer dune 2 was the first one that actually felt like any of those it actually felt like one of those rts games all the other games like herzog's vi doesn't feel like an rts i see why it has rts influences and why it influenced so many rts's but it doesn't feel like a true rts by any stretch because instead of having a mouse pointer that you move around you have a little robot and that robot can then hover over other robots that you like built and then it can move them around and direct them to attack so it turns the cursor for all intents and purposes into it into a into a unit itself which is kind of cool but it doesn't really because of that it feels more just like you can drop down and do a shoot 'em up thing or you can have it direct your your other soldiers so it kind of doesn't really feel like a true rts even though it definitely influenced a lot of rts games dune 2 i don't have any personal experience with actually uh kate and i were talking off mic and this is why i'm going to throw it over to him in a little bit because he actually has some personal experience with the game i, I played a little bit of it on my abandoned wear and that's about it but dune 2 is incredibly important and we'll get into why specifically when it comes to its legacy but it really just kind of like Westwood uh, just kind of set the table work for the RTS genre with it. And funnily enough, a lot of people wonder, I shouldn't say a lot of people, at least I wondered why it was called Dune 2, whatever happened to Dune 1. Well, the reason it's called Dune 2 is because the company that licensed Westwood, the Dune license, they licensed another company the same license. They, they licensed this one company. I forget what it is. I'd have to go back and read my notes. But they were tr they wanted them to make a Dune game. Well, they didn't get any updates from this company for months. And anytime they would try to follow up, they wouldn't really get much of a reply. So they basically just kind of dropped the project. They, but they didn't tell the original developer that they were going to drop them. So the original developer just kept on working. And in the meantime, they hired Westwood to make their own Dune game. And these two Dune games are incredibly different. They're nothing like each other. But both games ended up coming out in 1992. So even though there was no communication, it ended up being they both end up getting released in the same year. And so the 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 licensor was like, well, oh shit, I guess we have to release both of these. So one game was just Dune, and Westwoods became Dune Two. And I wish I had it all up in front of me, but yeah, that's that's pretty much the story of a, a very condensed story of how Dune Two got made. So. If it was a direct comparison to Legend, a uh, link to the past, excuse me, it would be better to compare potentially Command and Conquer to Link to the Past because Link to the Past is a refinement on a previously done formula. Dune 2 is essentially a brand new formula. And that's what stood out to me. Link to the Past was cool, but I'd seen it before. When I saw Dune 2 at a friend's house, we've talked about this. Lots of retro game lovers, if they didn't have access to a PC, they had that friend's dad who is a programmer that, and that friend had a PC and I would go over to my friend's house and I would watch Dune 2 and I had never seen anything like it. So for me, it's one of the few times in gaming history that I've seen something truly at the time novel, right? How often do we see brand new novel ideas anymore? It's pretty hard. So that's an experience that doesn't happen very often. And I had never seen RTS. You start wrapping your mind around what's going on. You can choose houses. There's these really awesome cutscenes that are like hand pixel animated. And it was just, I think it would have sold more 
it maybe if it wasn't on PC, I don't I mean I think the av- at least I don't know about the full numbers nationwide. Chris, you can tell me, but my intuition is most people, most kids had access to a console, more had access to a console than did a PC. Don't you think? In the well, 90s, that'd it, be the general it rule? Did, it did release on the Genesis slash Mega Drive in 1993, which I was actually unaware of when I did the series. Well, I probably mentioned it in the series, but I forgot about it. It did get a Genesis release, but even so, RTS games on a home console, especially on a home, home console, console back in the 90s with a D-pad, probably not the best experience. I've, I actually did... In my history of RTS series, there was a game that ended up getting ported to the Genesis that I actually own. It's called like Tyrants Fight Through Time. I forget what the original title of it was, but it's it's not great. It is uh the whole premise of it is that you're fighting through like d- different epochs. It it's it's incredibly am- ambitious. Its PC name was Megalomania, and it was a it was like a strategy game that like literally has you kind of advancing a civilization a civilization through like the history of human existence it's very kind of out there but i tried playing it on gen on the genesis and it's not intuitive at all i feel like you almost need a guide just to understand it so i'm not surprised it didn't sell well on the home console and real quick before we continue the original developer of dune one the other game that was that came out in 1992 was a developer called cryo interactive and the publisher was virgin games so virgin had the dune license they went to cryo and then cry they didn't hear any updates from them so they just said well i guess it's not coming out and but and decided to cancel it but didn't tell cryo they were canceling it and here we are with two two dune games coming out in the same year and they're very different from each other and and more to your original point there kate about games coming out on the gen on consoles i was about to say the genesis but a lot of them did come out on the genesis but you had some that came out for the super nintendo as well as some you know weird ports to the nes like king's quest 5 came out on the nes in 1992 i don't know why but it did they i don't think they sold very well I know at the beginning of this episode, it was kind of a throwback to our Dragon Quest episode where, you know, you're we kind of going back and forth if Ultima sold more than Dragon Quest, which it, it didn't. But <laughs> just joking with you. But um, a lot of PC games in general, they just didn't make good home conversions. Now, I've played the Genesis version of Dune 2. I think it is good. Uh, I did say that in the previous episode about Dune 2. But you had, like, Might and Magic that was brought over by EA. I don't think did terribly well on the Sega Genesis, and that's a... That is definitely a PC game. Even a lot of the more involved strategy games that would come over. And even if you move forward, like, when RTSs were booming on the PC themselves, you saw Command & Conquer and Warcraft come over to the Saturn and the PlayStation. And I think they sold well enough and they were reviewed very critically well. They weren't like AAA number sellers. They weren't no. getting the same numbers that your Metal Gear Solids were or you know, like your Maddens were, you know? They they were doing okay enough. That's I think that's why they kept trying to port them over. But they just weren't producing the same way you would expect console games to do. So I... I you say it would have sold well if it went to a console. I don't know, especially because the way that Dune Two controls. No, I wasn't. I wasn't implying that it would sell well if it went to console. I'm just saying okay, if okay. if I, if like the PC market was as volatile because many people had PCs in their home today as they did back then. I think they, right. it would have sold well. It doesn't play well on consoles. It's terrible. I don't. I would disagree. I think it plays well on the Genesis. Compared, it is. P- compared to playing it on a PC with a mouse. Like I would have definitely sure. had that game had I had a PC. I would have bought it. I would have got my parents to buy it. I mean, I know a lot of kids. We would go over just to play Dune Two, like a crowd of kids, because it was you couldn't get it on consoles. At least we didn't weren't aware of it at the time. And uh, I have tried to play other RTSs on console. I think they've never done well because they're just it's a hard genre to make fun on the console. That's why it's never it it's is. just, it's, mean, just I- it's inferior on console. The whole genre is. And I don't think you heard a lot of good things about RTSs on consoles until StarCraft 64. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I'm just saying, I'm not saying you should go back and play it. I haven't played it. I can't tell you. But that, I think that was like the first game people were like, oh, this RTS, this RTS slaps. I think and it was like, <laughs> Halo RTS Wars did okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, I think Dune 2, I'm not saying it's as good right now obviously we've got to talk through this i'm not saying it's as good as link to the past because most people would probably disagree but 
I think it was a victim of some circumstances, but it obviously did well and it spawned an entire genre. It wasn't like it was a failure, but yeah, it wasn't a mega blockbuster, four point whatever million copies. You you also referenced in the last episode with Mario Paint that it probably quote unquote sold more copies than what's reported because of piracy. Like PC, oh, it's so much yeah. easier to pirate games. So while there's two hundred fifty thousand, you know, like bought officially bought copies, uh, you could make the argument there's like hundreds of thousands more because it was so easy to pirate that game. I mean, now also like you like you can just go to my abandonware and it has dos bot you can play it through dosbox on your browser like you don't even need to download anything you just play it through your browser cuz dosbox is in the browser and it works easy there is by the way anyone listening uh, the shout out to emulators and and uh mod packs there's a pc version of dune 2 that has been community has gone through and like updated and added a bunch of stuff modernized controls more animations and like brought it up to basically today's standards but you still get to play the og game and it's it's a uh, it's quite good so if you're interested in trying dune 2 but with maybe some modern quality of life conveniences and a little bit better visuals you can do it it is possible so with that being said i think we're going to take a quick break and when we get back we're going to go over the criteria and start awarding these games who wins those four subjects uh, right before we decide who advances in the king of games 92 so Hold on to your butts, and we'll be right back. And welcome back. We are going to start going over the criteria for these two games and say, you know, just rank them. Say which one we think is going to take the four criteria we have come up for this tournament. And the four criteria are, as they always are, the critical and commercial reception of the game, our own personal attachment, the legacy of the game, what it left behind, and... What game would we rather play head to head? And those are the four we're going to talk about before we determine which game is going to advance. And like I just said, we're going to start out with commercial and critical reception, and I will kick this one off. I'm looking at these two games, how I've gone on uh, the previous episode and how I've determined what, what wins in this category is kind of looking how it was received back then and how it's received today. I don't think there's any debate really that both of these games were received well when they were released, and they're still received very well today. I think there's a conspiracy. The numbers are fake. <laughs> sure, you can you can say whatever you want to. That's fine. Um, but when you look at, I mean, when you look at this, when you look at the total sales, though, I mean, you brought up in the in the first half there's, that there's emulation. You can go and you can download Dune Two, you know, at my abandonware or whatever the case might be. But I mean, emulation's also something for the length of the past. It was for a very long time. That's why Nintendo is very anal when it comes to emulation because they know people were downloading it. Not to mention it getting re-released on the GBA, on the Wii Virtual Console, on the Wii U Virtual Console, on like, I think the 3DS too, maybe. Uh, also like the SNES Classic. It's come out like everywhere. Little did you know that EAD did actually stand for Eat a Dick and it was Nintendo's stance on emulators just, you know, 30 years ago. Little yes. did we know. <laughs> it just, it, little it, did it, we know. We should have seen it coming. No pun intended. They changed, they changed their name, by the way, <laughs> to Bagadex. <laughs> so, like, there, there's always that thing with emulation. Like, a lot of people are going to be downloading Zelda as well. So when it comes to sales, Fair flat point. out sales, I don't think there's any dispute that that's just Zelda. Yep. Uh, when it comes to critical commercial reception, I don't think anyone is saying contempor com you know, contemporaneously that Dune 2 is the best game of all time. And people still say that about Zelda. I tend to disagree with that statement, but I definitely would agree with the statement that Dune 2 is also not the best game of all time. Uh, didn't you say it was close? Like, think you read the number... There was one number that was like 4.6 or 4.7 for Zelda, and it was 4.1 for Dune 2. But what, what do you mean? It was like, like one, of the, one of the aggregate scores you were reading at the beginning. Oh, no, no. I mean, it's not, it's, it's not close in that sense. I mean, when you're talking about in the, in the fours, when you go to four to five, I mean, those, those are pretty big gaps. 
But I'm just saying, like, in terms of how it was received back then and how it's received today, I mean, they're both received well. I, I just don't think that anyone's calling Dune 2 the best game of all time. People do call Zelda the best game of all time, whether it's critically or commercially. And you look at the total sales between the two, the fact that people are still buying Zelda uh, A Link to the Past to this day in one form or fashion, or they're, I'm not saying they're getting their Nintendo online subscription to get it, but I'm certainly fairly sure they would probably buy a copy of it. It was available on a virtual console, again, because that's what Nintendo loves to do. So for this category, I'm, I'm giving my vote to Zelda A Link to the Past for critical and commercial reception. Kate? Mm, I mean, yeah, I guess. I thought you, I thought when you read the scores, my, I heard you basically saying that it was like within 80% and 90%. They weren't that big of a gap. But maybe I, maybe I heard wrong. When you get to the top, the, the, the smallest of gaps is big. Okay. Okay, Michael Jordan, Kobe. Thanks for the pep talk. Kobe. I took that personally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. I, my point was that it's, you, may, you did say it. They both were received very well initially, and they're both received well. But Zelda is received better in general. So yeah, I'll, I'll go with Zelda. It is what it is. So for me, uh, I'm going to bury the lead for a little bit, but I th I'm kind of taking a different approach to this. I think that when you look at the, the t at the time these games were released, you could make the argument that they're on equal playing field, like for what they were for their dip, for their respective audiences, for the console audience and for the PC audience. Ah, they, like a per capita. Th argument. Yeah, they both kind yes. of are on yeah. the same level. Like if you're comparing them like across the entire gaming audience, you would have to give it to. I mean, it, you can't you can't really compare because they're two completely different audiences. Uh, especially back then, PC and console now are much more blended than they used to be. Back in the Third 90s, point. it was much more separate. So I think it's harder to compare that. So I'm just going to kind of put those together on the same playing field. What I would argue is that since how they were received in the time put them on the same playing field, so I'm going to kind of add in how would they be received now? If these games were to come out now, how would they be received? Which I know wasn't the most accurate me metric, but considering that if we're looking at how they were back then, they're all pretty on pretty level playing field. So since they're equal-ish on that playing field back in 92, let's look at it right now, and it would go to Link to the Past. Like I know it's, that's, I mean, that's what it's going to be for me as well. And even if I go back to 92, I feel like Link to the Past just edges it out a little bit, but... I kind of wanted to just kind of go, I kind of at least want to make the point that to their respective audiences, they're pretty much on an equal playing field. So if you're looking at it in a modern context in terms of like if this game were to come out now, Zelda would rate higher. I know that's a weird way to think about it because we're supposed to think about what was this like back in 92. But like I said, if you their respective audiences are on pretty equal playing field. If I had to nitpick, I would go with Zelda back in 92. And if I don't nitpick at all, I would go with Zelda now. So it, Link to the Past takes it for me in terms of critical reception. Like I was saying earlier that it, there's a little bit of an unfair comparison because this was like basically the first iteration of an RTS, so the clunky version 1.0 of a new genre, a new formula. Where Link to the Past is, I guess, version 2.0. You had the first Zelda Link to the Past is way more approachable, way more refined if, it, if you were to play today. That's why I was saying if you do play Dune 2 today, it's actually better to go you know, buy a legit copy on GOG and then download a few mod packs that basically bring it to the modern age because it is a clunky experience. You can't buy it on GOG, by the way. Yeah, on GOG? I bet you could buy it on GOG. You can't buy it on GOG. Mm -mm. I, that Dune license, really? man. That Dune license. Yeah. Huh. You cannot buy it. You can only get it my abandonware. Well, now, now you know I pirated it, but whatever. <laughs> I have all the I have all the mods and shit, but I was I wanted to I wanted to argue for doing it right. Well, then I don't really care at all. If there's really no way, <laughs> if there's really no way to play a game the quote the right way, then get on there and get it and play it. Exactly. Exactly. Nice. <laughs> all right. So Zelda: A Link to the Past takes critical and commercial reception. I think much to nobody's surprise. We are going to move on to personal attachment. I think this is where we might start to see some surprises. Maybe not based off the intro, but we'll see. Josh, which one of these games do you feel more closely attached to? Is it A Link to the Past or is it Dune 2? It's weird for me because I have very little personal attachment to either of these two. Like I mentioned before, 
I didn't really grow up with a link to a link to the past. My first Zelda was Ocarina of Time. My first console, even though I'm old enough to remember that my first console should have been a Super Nintendo, my first console was an N64. So I I didn't really play, get to experience a lot of these SNES games at all. And with Dune 2, I didn't really have a PC back then either. My first RTS that I was able to play on my own home system was actually <laughs> Star Wars Galactic Battlegrounds, which is just... I love that game! Dude, it's so good. Oh! It's, it's just Age of Empires with Star Wars. That's all Age it is. Age of Empires with Star Wars. It's the shit. It's all it is. And then its expansion pack is great because it added... It's it's the only good part of the prequels where it added like the Clone Wars and stuff like that and you can control like the Republic Army and stuff. It's great. So that was like the first computer I could handle. And that game came out in like 2002. So I, I didn't... I, 10 years after this. So I really missed out on both of these. But if I really look back on when I first experienced both of these, uh, Dune 2 was just a week ago. So there's even less personal attachment to it. Link to the Past, I at least, before I even play it, played it for the first time, I knew what it was. And I, I genuinely think there is a level of almost like misplaced nostalgia for it, where it's like, I feel nostalgic for the game, even though I didn't grow up with it as a child. And I always find that idea interesting where you're But the nostalgic. franchise is nostalgic to you. Not yeah. really, though. That's what's really? interesting. Like, I, I loved Ocarina of Time way too much, actually. I played it too much where now it's hard for me to go back to that game because I get, I'm, it's like one of those movies that you've seen too many times. So even though, so you loved it the first time, but now you, it's, you've almost poisoned the well with it. And that's kind of what Ocarina of Time is. It's an awesome metal band, by the way. What? Sorry. sorry. Poison, Poison the Well is an awesome metal band. I've never. I'll shut up. I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) I'll take your word for it. But I've kind of poisoned the well with, with it. So I, I mean, if anything, I've poisoned the well with the Zelda franchise for me because it took me years to beat my second Zelda game. Like, I beat Ocarina of Time as a kid, and then I didn't beat another Zelda game until, like, 2012, 2014. I think it was, like, I was playing, wow. like, the Wind Waker remaster or something like that. I forget what it was. I was playing maybe the D, one of the DS games. But with A Link to the Past, though, it still makes me feel nostalgic. Like, it, there's something about... Nintendo in the Super Nintendo era, in the 16-bit era, is just, it, there's something kind of whimsical about it to me. I, know, I don't know if that's the best adjective for it, but I feel like I have a much more personal connection, even if there's not necessarily the years and the memories to back it up. So for me, personal connection goes to A Link to the Past. Uh, as you can tell, I am biased towards Dune 2, but here's the thing. If I'm being honest, I have a massive personal attachment to Link to the Past as well. So this is quite hard for me. I, this is the one question about the formula I've been thinking about all week. Because I wanted to be honest. What do I actually have? I have massive... I'm like the opposite of Josh. I have very big personal attachment to both games. And instead of rambling about why, I'll just... Quick summary. I love RPGs. Link to the Past is sort of an entry-level action RPG. The Dark World Switch. Not an RPG. It's an action RPG. Fine. Okay. I use those terms. I don't care. I call them (laughs) RPGs. That's how I classify it. Action RPG in Metroidvania. It's a top-down Metroidvania. Okay, you don't get levels, but you still progress like an RPG. Whatever contrarian, I don't care. You can use... (laughs) I, I, I have my own goddamn dictionary, right? I live in my own world. You can translate for the audience. Fine. Um, but what I, w- what I would say, th- that type of game prepared me to, to move up to a real RPG. I had never played anything. And so the idea of like a consistent overworld, not just going through levels, s- s- progression, it's not just... All I played before that was like platformers, like Sonic. I played a lot of Sonic. And I wasn't quite into... I wouldn't quite consider myself a gamer, but Link to the Past was one of the first times I experienced I'm in a world and I can explore this world. And uh, when I got to that part where you get all three pendants and then you flip to the dark world, I realized there was more than just half the game left. That was a big moment for me. And then moving on from that game, I got into a lot of games that have become iconic, just really important for me. The Dune 2, on the other hand, I love sci-fi. Dune is one of my favorite franchises of all time. I played Dune, the game, way before I ever read the book. I knew nothing about the The book was way too too advanced for my reading level at the time I was playing Dune 2, but I ended up getting... And it was thick with two Cs. <laughs> or, yeah. Not really. <laughs> it's not that thick. 
And then, uh, and then I watched all the terrible Dune adaptations, and there wasn't really a good one until the new the new film from Villeneuve, which I think was awesome. But you'd have to be into the series to like it. So it's in Dune the the IP or the world was one of the most influential sci-fi franchise in my taste. So, and I associate that with the game because it's the first time I was introduced to the universe was the game. And then also I did have a big RTS phase shortly after that. Star Wars Galactic Battlegrounds is one of the RTS I played. Oh yeah. A, of just an embarrassingly large amount of hours of, went into that game. Age of Empires, Command and Conquer. So... <sighs> As much as I wanted to give it to, ah, it's so hard because on one hand, one of my favorite parts of my taste is sci-fi. I love sci-fi. On the other hand, JRPGs are a part of my soul and RPGs. And I feel like Link to the Past funneled me in that direction. Both are equal. I don't know what to do, man. I've been thinking about it all week. I still don't know what to do. Fuck. Just say a fucking game. <sighs> Just pick one. Okay. You know what? I'll say this. I don't play JRPGs much anymore. I try. I try to get into them. They're too slow. I still consume sci-fi, so I'm going to go with Dune 2. So for my personal attachment, I did not play either of these games as a kid. And if I played either of them, I think the only one I may have played was Zelda, and it was like for five minutes. After briefly playing both of these games, and in fact, I, I beat A Link to the Past when it came out for the Wii U Virtual Console, what, not about nine years ago. I sat down, I played through it. I don't like... A link to the past. I don't like it. Really? I don't like it at all. I can't stand it. In fact, just wow. the thought about going back and playing this fucking game again, like, makes me makes me angry. That's surprising. because I never want to play that game again. I don't like it in the slightest bit. I I had fun with Dune too. So not having played either of these two games when I was a kid. I have to say that my personal attachment goes to Dune 2. And the other thing is, too, is I like RTSs. So even like if I liked The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past, there's there's no denying how much I was in love with the RTS genre during that time period. And the fact that this is the game that founded it, I have to have the the personal attachment to it. So, yeah, personal attachment, I guess, goes to Dune 2. I am shocked. uh, Yeah, you might be the only person, I think has ever genuinely told me that they hate a link to the past i am yeah i don't like legitimately shocked right now i i was My, not expecting yeah that. it's so boring <laughs> wow it's incredibly boring do you like top down games in general or you just not yes okay yes i love it what's i your, love top down games what's your favorite top down I, game? i think zelda just for reference huh what's your favorite like top down metrovania-esque type game for reference Oh, I, I just got done with East Origin, and that's probably one of my Ooh, favorite. Okay, so that's weird. It's, it's fantastic, and you don't like Link to the Past. I'm no. Just in, wow. I might have a seizure. Well, he is the contrarian. <laughs> he is the contrarian. You never fail me, dude. I don't. I don't think it's good. I do not. I think it's overrated. But I'll wow. get more to that later. <laughs> Moving on. So just to recap here briefly, in terms of the the critical and commercial reception, Zelda took it three nothing. And in terms of personal attachment, Dune 2 took it 2 to 1. But we are moving on, and we are moving on to Legacy. What did this game leave behind for the rest of the gaming world? I am going to kick it off with Cade. Cade, which game do you think holds the Legacy? Dune 2. Okay. E- easy, because <laughs> RTS is a genre that still goes, and uh, I gave birth to it where... Zelda as a as an IP hasn't gone back to that top down formula. It hasn't it hasn't been a lasting legacy for the franchise. Now you could argue that the style of game has been made endlessly by other games, but Zelda was not the only top down game from that from that era as well. It was just one of the more popular ones. It can't claim to be the main influence behind the entire genre, whereas Dune Two can claim to be the the main influence behind the entire genre. So I'm going to go with Dune 2. All right, I'm going to go next. And I, too, am going to say Dune 2 for Legacy. And I, I think this is a slam dunk. I don't even think it's close yeah, on, it's easy. on Legacy. It's e- This one's easy. And it's not because... I don't want to say because Link to the Past is bad, because I just called it bad. But I'm going to say a lot of people like A Link to the Past. They enjoy it. 
But in terms of legacy, you're talking about a game that established a genre versus a game which is kind of at the culmination of where the genre is already heading. So with A Link to the Past, you had the original Zelda, which kind of established the genre in and of itself, even though it borrowed a lot from games like Hydlide and Tower of Duraga. And in the interim, you had games that did it better than the original Legend of Zelda, maybe a hot take, like Crystallis and Newtopia. And what you're getting with the Legend of Zelda Link to the Past is just an evolution of those formulas. It Does it do it better than them? You could argue yes. I... I could make the argument that I think Castralis is a little bit more fun than A Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, but I think I'd get crucified if I said that, so I'll say it. It's <laughs> just a little bit more fun. Uh, you also had Ys, which was a, was a little bit more fun than A Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, I think, uh, just because it doesn't have all those annoying puzzles. But if you want to talk about Legacy, where it went, and you're also talking about a game in The Legend of Zelda, uh, A Link to the Past, where they took away the non-linearity. So when you're coming today into 2022 and you have a game like A Link Between Worlds and Breath of the Wild and people are saying, I am so happy that they went back to the formula they were trying to accomplish with the original Legend of Zelda. What does that tell you about A Link to the Past? That's a really good point. It's telling you they kind of screwed up with what they no, were trying to I accomplish. Disagree. This doesn't I mean it's a bad game. That. I disagree with that. It tells You'll you get that your they... turn. <laughs> I was just no, they, it tells you that they used the same formula too many times and I'll I'll stop anymore but until I get to my turn. Sure. But but when people don't go back it reminds me of a link to the past. They didn't say that. What they said when the link between worlds came out was, "Wow, this is so much this is this is better than link to the past. This reminds me of the original one. Breath of the Wild. This reminds me of the original one." So what you're getting with a link to the past, yes, it was going down the line that everything else was going. It was going down a linearity path that it probably should have done. I'm not going to take that away from it. It probably made the right design choice. But it didn't fulfill the promise that the original Legend of Zelda set out to do. It only made it more approachable, which is in and of itself an accomplishment. But it, in terms of legacy, I, I got to give it to Dune 2. So, Josh? Well, I first got to say that I think your argument's a little like off for that. I, it, now, you know what? This is going to be a weird thing. So let me, let me go down this real quick. So if they had done A Link to the Past and then immediately done something let's say in the same let's let's imagine a world where breath of the wild was the next game after link to the past and everyone was or a link between worlds was the next game after link to the past and everyone was saying that then you'd be 100% in the right because they they went down a path that nobody wanted the reason why people were saying that with a link between worlds and breath of the wild is that there was almost there was like 15 or 20 years in between a link to the past and finally something that broke the Zelda formula. Ocarina of Time is just linked to the past in 3D. Like it's every game after that followed the link to the past formula. And while that was fine, it that's why people say that. That's why people are like, finally, they're going back to the old style because they had played 10 plus games of a link to the past over and over and over and over again. So in terms of legacy, link to the past created the Zelda genre. Um, it really defined, I mean, like link to the past, since it pretty much, they took link to the past and made it 3d and turned it into Ocarina and that's Ocarina of time that you could make the argument that a link to the past helped create the modern 3d adventure game because they used the solid formula that was already in a link to the past applied it to a 3d world in ocarina of time and then ocarina of time is incredibly influential whether you like the game or not it's one of the most important games of all time because it showed developers how to make an adventure game in 3d not it hasn't aged as well, but it's just like Mario 64 hasn't aged as well, but they both are incredibly important for what they did for the medium. Uh, I take offense to that. Mario 64 has aged quite well. I like native. It, I, I agree. I, native I like Mario it. 64. You can hop on and play right now. It's no, fun. no, I'm, I like Mario. I think it's fantastic. I like Mario 64 and I think it holds up pretty well. I'm saying the specifically the camera, the camera, it did not age well on Mario 64. Yeah, that's, that's its fair biggest point. problem. The movement is beautiful. But the thing is, is like to to say that like by oh be, because everyone's saying that after Breath of the Wild came out that oh this is fine they finally go back to original is like somehow 
a problem to a link to the past is a bit disingenuous when you're missing 15. Like there's 10 games that are basically linked to the past in different iterations. That's a good rebuttal to Chris's second argument. But the first argument, and I think that's a very valid point. I think you might win that. Mm -hmm. But the first point was at the end of the day, Dune gave birth to a literal genre. Well, you, hold on, a link to the past you didn't is an yeah, entry yeah, he, in a he genre. He needs to make his point. Yeah, he still needs to make his point. I'm, I, I'm saying you win the second point against Chris. I thought he made a good point, and your rebuttal, I think, is a really solid answer. There was ten games just like that. It's a really I good answer. I think we could debate this all day, and I, I think I would win the argument. But we're not here to do that. No, I don't think you would. <laughs> in, in this specific, <laughs> oh, I, now whether or not the game, okay. whether or not the game is good or not, that is an argument that I don't know if I could win or not. Specifically, saying that the argument that Breath of the Wild proves it's a bad game, I don't think you'd win. That that's completely ignoring the fact that we've had. 15 linked to the past in a row and finally something different. You know what I'm saying? It, it'd be like... I said I think it's a bad game. I'm not saying it's subjectively a bad game. I just don't like it. But that you, but that we could have a debate on, which I don't think... I'm not that passionate about the game. The reason I'm even dying on this hill right now is I think the argument to say that because Breath of the Wild... Everyone's saying Breath of the Wild is like a breath of fresh air. It's because it literally was. It's because it was 15, 20 years of the same shit in a row because they Nintendo just kept doing a Link to the Past over and over and over again. If they had done a Link to the Past and then a Breath of the Wild, everyone's like, oh, thank God they went back to uh, something more like the original. 100%. Breath of the, And then it shows that a Link to the Past did something wrong. But it didn't. It did something so right that it took sure. them 20 plus years to undo it. That's a good point. But what, that's why I'm talking, That's I'm speaking about it in terms of legacy. That That's why I'm saying in legacy. By that it, argument, it, it took 20 it plus years to undo what Link to the Past did. With all that, you're right. With all that said, though, with all that said, I, I know I made I've made a very passionate plea about this. My vote still goes to Dune Two. <laughs> 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 I, I wanted to, I wanted to at least argue this point because I didn't. I thought your argument wasn't the best, but the reason I'm going with Dune oh Two, oh my god, is this, <laughs> is this reason? It created the <laughs> RTS genre, the RTS genre, and you mentioned it in the previous episode if it wasn't for dune 2 we wouldn't have warcraft if it wasn't for warcraft we wouldn't have mobas we wouldn't have world of warcraft we wouldn't have i mean we would have mmos but we wouldn't have mmos where they are today pretty much almost dead but that's that's mainly because time killed them more than anything else you would have you wouldn't have world of warcraft and without mobas esports would have taken off and it, it did exist back then, but MOBAs were a huge like boon to esports. So like Dune 2, as much as a link to the past, you know, really set Zelda in motion for 20 plus years, it only set Zelda in motion for 20 plus years. How many other games have copied Zelda's formula successfully? Very few. I can't think of many. How many other games have copied Dune 2's formula and modified it and made it something their own successfully? And it still feels different enough. It doesn't feel like a clone of Dune 2. Command & Conquer, same developer, so maybe you don't count that one. But then you have Age of Empires, StarCraft, Warcraft. I like Company of Heroes a lot. That's one of my favorite RTSs. The Dawn of War series is also really popular. Uh, Supreme Commander is also really popular. There's, there's like... there's tons and tons of rts's that have gained some sort of a following and all of it stems back to dune 2 and then tons of mobas that have gained a huge following all of it stems back to wow uh, uh, warcraft 3 which stems back to dune 2 the the only reason i went down that hill in the first place was the, just i didn't think he, uh, the argument of breath of the wild invalidating <laughs> link to the past was a good one <laughs> that's why because chris is wrong full, that's, that's why you did it that's why i went on, down that full <laughs> tangent there but yeah no i have dune a quick two. question for both of you guys to, mm. t did what came out first dune 2 or the first sim city do either of you know off the top of your head mm. sim city okay yeah, sim city I didn't know. What, what year did SimCity come out? Probably 91? I think 89 or 90. Uh, I, I think you're probably right. I think 89. 89, you're right. 89. Okay. Well, I it, SimCity came out earlier. I, I was going to make the point, and I still think it would stand, that the RTS formula, I think, has influenced the Sim formula as well because of similar angle, similar control mechanism, grabbing units, moving, clicking on things. I think they borrow from each other, but SimCity came out quite a bit earlier, so... I don't think it gets that much credit. 
Yeah, it, 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 we were doing King Games 89. I mean, SimCity's a juggernaut. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. SimCity's huge. Yeah, I agree with you. Okay, so Dune 2 takes Legacy 3 to nothing. <laughs> I've been laughing <laughs> off like off mic for like 10 I minutes hope it now wins. just because I'm, I'm genuinely somewhat shocked that it's this, like it's technically right now it's 2 to 1 in favor of Dune 2. Yeah, baby. What's <laughs> up? So now we're going to do the fourth and final category before we pick the game that we think should advance to the round of eight the quarterfinals we are going to talk about what game we would rather play head-to-head -head today we're going to start off with you josh out of these two games which one would you rather sit down and play today now i have a question before i answer that are we talking about like if we could play this game right now it has to be no frills to it just the base game no mods or anything or yes yes okay yes uh so it just exactly how it was in 1992 if we were able to play it today. Okay, then I'm going to link to the past. As much as I respect Dune 2 for what it's done, it's rough around the edges. It's hard to play by modern standards. And like Kate said, Kate, you made a very good point. Dune 2 is essentially the original Legend of Zelda for the RTS genre. You know, it's it it has a lot of great things about it, but it's rough around the edges. It has some, it has some things that aren't the most uh, user friendly. Specifically, you have to manually click and tell. You have to select a unit, click the word move, then select where you want them to move. Select them, then click the word attack, and then select. Or you could click attack and tell them what to attack. But in you know modern ones, you would just right click to make the move, or you would you left click to select and right click to move, or right click to attack. But it's amazing for the time playing this in 1992. There's nothing else like it, but playing this in 2022, uh, it's, it doesn't hold up as well. And that's not a knock against the game. Like most, like, like you said, you have to always take it into consideration of like what it was like at the time, but we're not looking at that right now. Like, what would I rather play right now? Link to the past is more fun to play right now. It doesn't require any mods to to bring it up to modern standards. It still holds up because it still is a fun game to play. Um, well, you know, at least in my opinion, I know now now that I realize there's someone in here who doesn't like think it's fun. It's, I feel I have to I have to watch my <laughs> words now. But no, I, I genuinely do like playing this game, and I would rather play this game now than than Dune as it is. I'll take this one second, and I'm going to say I would rather play Dune 2 just because I have to, because I just shit all over <laughs> A Link to the Past earlier. So if I was going to say A Link to the Past right now, uh, I would kind of make more of an ass of myself. And look, I'm not trying to take anything away from A Link to the Past. It's, not, it's just not my jam, y'all. I played it. I didn't like it. I didn't enjoy it. But I, with my limited time with Dune 2, I did. I was addicted. I was hooked. I think one of the things that I, I like Dune 2 more for is just that I'm not a big puzzle guy in my action uh, RPGs, as Cade put them. I'll just call it an action RPG. I know he's probably pissed at me. Now. <laughs> but I don't, I don't like a lot of puzzles in my action RPGs. If you're going to have a top-down action game like that, I want it to be action. I think that's why I've been playing through the East games at the time of this recording for the past year. And I've been having a blast with them because I really don't have to think too much about what I'm doing in a dungeon, maybe some very rudimentary thinking. But when I'm playing an action game, that's what I want to do. I want to chill. I want to sit back. I don't want to be like, oh, what's what's this item do? Or how do I move this item here or get over to that platform? And like, I, I, I just want to get through these things with relative ease. And I want the difficulty to be in figuring out the enemy. That's the puzzle I want is figuring out the enemy, not so much the dungeon. And that's just mm. that's just my MO. That's just how I am. And uh, I think that's why I would want to play Dune 2 more is every single situation is dynamic. Yeah, you can get a, uh, a similar formula in order to do it, but it's an RTS through and through. It's an RTS at heart. It is the original RTS. So th there's a million different ways you can seek out victory, even though if this victory is the same thing you got to do. And uh, there's, there's a rhythm you have to learn how to build units at or what units you have to build or what's your most successful strategy. But that's a lot more fluid and a lot more flexible than anything that you could potentially get from a link to the past. And I know that I, I like instances where things are more dictated by linearity in, in a lot of situations. But between these two games, just the way they're designed, it's Dune 2 for me in terms of head-to-head. -head. So, Kate. I uh, think it's interesting that you clown me for using the term action RPG, and then you turn around and use it because it's fucking useful. It's a useful term <laughs> <laughs> to, to apply I to those games. I concede you're correct. 
I was just trying to give you shit because I love it. <laughs> also, do you, you don't like Dark Souls games probably then? Because you don't like figuring out the environment? No, I, I, when I played Dark Souls, I didn't care for it much. <sighs> That's too bad, but it makes sense. I mean, that's that I can see that if you care about the enemies more than the environment, then um, yeah, the whole Souls Born formula might not be up your alley, which is too bad. It's a great formula, but I could see that. I'm more Mega Man than Zelda, dude. Yeah, I could see that. That's true. That's a good point. Mega Man. I would say Dune 2. Not because I think Dune 2 is like an easier experience. It is more rough around the edges, but we're talking personally, preference. That goes into your subjective tastes. I just like... I'm I'm not into the kitty art style, and I like that old pixel 90s nostalgia. If you're playing an old game, what are you playing it for? Nostalgia. Dune 2 gives me a bigger nostalgia shot than Link to the Past. So, Dune 2. You know what? We're going to I'm going let, I'm going to recap this because I just want to I just want to put this out there. Dune 2 barely made it into this tournament. It like was dragging its foot. The the door hit its ass on the way in. And we're going to go into deciding which game is going to advance to the quarterfinals with uh we're critical commercial reception going to link uh, uh, I mean, a link to the past, three to nothing. But the other three categories, you have, <laughs> you have <laughs> personal attachment going two to one for Dune, legacy three to zero oh for Dune, and uh, what game you'd rather play head to head, two to one for Dune. It took three out of the four categories to the number one seed, the number one seed, and this no game words. is just is just like drunkenly stumbling into the King of Games 92 and just took three out of four in the criteria. With that being said, we're going to take a quick break and think about what we just did. <laughs> and then we are going to let you know which game is going to advance to the quarterfinals. This is going to be wild, y'all. May God have mercy on Alright everyone, welcome back, and we are here to tell you which game is going to advance to the round of eight, the quarterfinals, between Zelda, A Link to the Past, and Dune 2. Just to recap, Dune 2 took three out of our four criteria categories, somehow, and this is wild, this can go either way. Now, for the King of Games 92, the host gets to put in their vote first, and that's me, so... What do I think? Which game do I think should advance? I came into this thinking this was going to be an easy slam dunk choice. And I, I still kind of think it is, to be honest with you. I do have to get out my frustrations first. I look at a game like Zelda A Link to the Past, and I look at it as a game that is a sacred cow. That how dare anyone say anything negative about it? Because it's one of the few Zelda games that you look at the pantheon of Zelda games that has, I don't think, ever been really approached from a critical perspective. Every other Zelda game has been maligned or attacked before being built up as being the best Zelda game. They have, to, they seem to have this rotation that when they come out, they're the best game that's ever been made of all time and no game has ever have been as good. Then a couple years later, it's an overrated game that you probably shouldn't play. And then 10 years later, they're like, this game was overlooked and you really should play it. And it needs a remake. That seems to be the cycle of Zelda games. You're not wrong. A Link to the Past didn't have that, didn't have that overview, I think. It came out, it was a Zelda game, it was very successful. And ever since then, everyone said it's the greatest game of all time. And then I went to play it and I was bored. I went to play it and I didn't care much for it. Dune 2 created a genre. It did something fantastic for all of PC gaming. But you ask your regular gamer, what is Dune 2, the Battle of Arrakis, or the building of a dynasty, and that's a stupid-ass name. And they're not going to, your average gamer isn't going to know, even though it sold 250,000 copies. Like, the average gamer that played Dune 2 was probably our age when they played it, and now, like, they're, they're like, almost 70 years old. 
So if you want to find someone who played Dune 2 back in 1992, they're probably in their early 60s, early to late 60s, you know, late 50s. And that's just the nature of the beast. So when I look at what is the game of 1992, and I do this, and I say, you know, moving on into the round of eight. And I, I don't think I'd say this about many games in this tournament. And I don't, I, I don't know if I would vote for this game uh, moving forward beyond this. But my vote's going to go to The Legend of Zelda Link to the Past. I think that it gets that Nintendo bump. I think it gets the benefit of the doubt from a lot of people because they see the name Zelda and they automatically think it's better than every other game that they see there. Whether or not they've played it or whether or not they're really being critical towards it, I think a lot of people just see that name and they're like, that's a good game, that's quality, and that does say something. I, I don't like making this pick. I wish that Dune 2 was more familiar. I wish more people knew about it for as much as it established and as much as it did for the genre that it founded because I could probably take a lot of games in the RTS genre moving forward from this year and they would dominate, dominate the year they came out in. But this is the first one and it just, it did not dominate this year. It just laid down a foundation, a fantastic foundation, a brilliant foundation, but you're not taking down a link to the past in my opinion. So my, again, my vote goes to link to the past begrudgingly. I wish I didn't have to do that, I, but I feel almost like obliged to. So you two have the option of making me feel better about myself and choosing Dune 2, but uh, let, let's see where this goes. So Cade, over to you. Which game do you choose to advance in the King of Games 92? Um, <clears throat> I'm going to say Dune 2. The, re the, re the reason why, I'm just going to get that out now, is I value legacy probably more than all of the metrics and personal attachment more than all the metrics that we talked about. The reason I think anyone is listening to this podcast or making retro gaming content is because we're addicted to nostalgia. And Dune 2 is a better performer, gets me higher on nostalgia than Link to the Past. And the legacy is just, you know, and like Link to the Past is going to win anyway. And I feel like Link to the Past is sort of like the Final Fantasy VII of the Zelda series, like you were saying. And it's kind of one of those. I feel embarrassed when I'm like, hey, my first Zelda game was Link to the Past. Like, of course. Of course it was. Like, that's everybody's, in, in my age group's first game. And I don't think it's the best Zelda game in the entry by any stretch of the means. It's not bad. But yeah, over, I just it came down to when you were talking about what would you rather play right now? And I think about getting out this podcast and what do I want to play? I'd rather boot up Dune 2. And I don't know. That's how I feel. All right. So we have a deciding vote. We have, <sighs> I almost wish I had voted Dune 2, but then I think I would get screamed at yeah. somewhere Dude, along you would the lose line. all the subscribers on your podcast. Oh my God. It would be, <laughs> well, I mean, it's still not over yet. We still have one more vote. And that's on Josh to be the tiebreaker the number one seed against the 20 seed and we're at a tiebreaker for, for the initial round for Zelda here. So it's up to you, Josh, which, which game is advancing into King of games 92. So I'm, I, I got to bury the lead of course, because we got to keep the listeners, you, have to. you know, we, they got to be salivating for what this answer is going to be, but no, I, I, I was thinking about this and actually thinking back to something I said before about, Link to the Past and how what did Link to the Past influence just other Zelda games? That's not necessarily true. In fact, you know, Link to the Past influenced tons and tons of games. I I, I talk I spoke specifically about games that try to clone Zelda and they no one really has successfully. And while that is true, there's lots of elements of Zelda games that have found their ways into other games outside of Zelda. I'm bad. I'm I'm not as good as other people at looking at mechanics and tracing their lineage forward and following the trajectory of where a specific idea or game concept or game design concept went on moving forward. But Zelda is one of the most influential games of all times. I mean, almost every game developer and designer has cited Zelda as something, not everyone, of course, but a large portion of the development community cite Zelda as an influence in, in some way, shape, or form, or at least as an influence to get into games, maybe not a game that they design, but into games itself. And I think one of the hardest things about this pick here is that you're really going up against the populace's nostalgia of a game versus the legacy of 
uh, the RTS? Like, does the legacy of RTS games outweigh the legacy of Zelda? And Link to the Past ultimately put Zelda on the map for a lot of people. It's not obviously it wasn't the original Zelda. There was one other Zelda. There's two other Zeldas, excuse me, prior to this. And it's a, it's a tough choice because both did something immensely important. And I, I'm I'm kind of stuck on this because the part of me really <laughs> thinks that the legacy of Dune Two should push it to. <laughs> go beyond but the other part of me sees zelda as one of the most important series of all time and then you have (laughs) i i think (laughs) you guys are killing me right now (laughs) (laughs) i got you know you want to do it turn off your do it (laughs) (laughs) um but no i it's it's very tough i honestly think if Dune 2 had gone up against any other game other than either A Link to the Past, I would have voted for it. But I have to go with A Link to the Past on this one. <sighs> and I'm not doing this to save Chris's ass. I'm not doing this to save my own ass. I'm doing this because Zelda has influenced games outside of the Zelda genre. Art Dune 2 has influenced games Re, for the most part within the RTS genre with the except I know MOBAs are outside of that but MOBAs are like this like bastardized stepchild of the RTS genre sort of so it's kind of like weird stepchild's lives matter but if 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 I'm really looking at it like uh Dune 2 really played a huge part into two separate genres besides RTS MMOs cuz you know Blizzard went on to create WoW and then it also through fan mods of Warcraft 3 created the MOBA genre. Zelda has influenced countless and countless and countless and count like more games than you can probably count just because so many people have played it. I think that it's that's a fair point. I think that it's um the the things that it has tu- has has affected and influenced is incalculable. It's impossible to know because there's just so many game developers and designers who have seen something from Zelda and have incorporated it in their game, whether it's consciously or subconsciously. And as much as I kind of wish I could give it to Dune 2, just because I kind of want the upset just to like fuck with people, but real, I I, you I, could. I know I'm giving it to Link to the Past. I already said I, I would. But I, okay. I really think I like if you look at the amount of things that it's 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 weird because I know I gave legacy to Dune Two. We all gave legacy to Dune Two because it creating a genre feels a lot more monumental. Zelda didn't really create a genre; it created its own genre. But I feel like it's legacy outside. Like it's almost like it's ex, it's extended legacy is larger than its own legacy, if that makes sense. And that to me is why I would go with Link to the Past. All right, so the Legend of Zelda: a Link to the Past has advanced to the round of eight. It was a lot closer than I think anyone, anyone would have thought. So maybe this game's in trouble as a number one seed. We'll see. We'll see what awaits it real quick. coming up. Sorry, but before, real quick. Go ahead. What was the second seed? What's the second seed? In? The second seed is Super Mario Kart. See, I would have voted for Dune 2 over Super Mario Kart. Just saying. Just to throw that out there. Wow. What's third seed? So Street Fighter? Street Fighter 2. Ooh, that would be hard. I wouldn't have voted for it over Street Fighter 2. Street Fighter 2's legacy just, is I don't think yeah, it, I don't even like fighting yeah. games, but I wouldn't vote vote for that over Street Fighter 2. Sorry. Uh finish what you're saying. I was just curious because I mentioned before <laughs> if this went up against any other game other than the one seed, I probably would vote for it. Uh, other than Link to the Past, I probably would vote for it. I just wanted to see what else was up there. Oh yeah. But we have two podcasters here that we need to plug. And I highly advise that everyone who's listening to the King of Games 92 listens to all the podcasts that are part of this project because they're all amazing. But the two people who are here today have some podcasts that you need to go listen to. So because he is a patron, he gets the privilege of going first. Cade, what are you on? Where can people find you? All the regular podcast platforms, gaming memories, the shtick, the angle is, I am the one true prophet of the gaming gospel. Me and Moto the Father, coaching me the Son and Carmack, the Holy Ghost appeared to me in prophetic vision, said all the other podcasts are trash. Their words, not mine. No offense to you guys. They're all abominations. <laughs> it's Kojima. It, yeah, and to restore the one true video game podcast to earth, all I got to do is interview creative and interesting people about their favorite gaming memories growing up. 
both of you have been on the podcast. So if you want to hear Chris's gaming memories or Josh's gaming memories, the games that shaped their taste, which then influenced this episode, you can go find them on all the major podcast platforms. Just Google Gaming Memories Podcast. You'll find your shit. Thank you very much, Cade. Yeah, go check out Gaming Memories. And Josh, where can we find you and your podcast on the internet and all your other things? My podcast is the Still Loading Podcast, and you can find that wherever good podcasts are given away for free. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, all that good stuff. Uh, YouTube, but there's no video component. It's just a thumbnail for an hour and a half or however long the episode is. In any case, uh, you can find it in all those locations. Um... Yeah, uh, if and both Chris and Cade have been on the podcast. Cade was on the Shinobi episode during my summer of PS2 uh, back in 2020. And Chris, most recently, uh, well, I don't know if you'll be, you, I mean, I don't know when this is coming out, but you've been on two episodes of the podcast, at least at the time of this recording. You were on the Russian attack episode, which at the time of this recording is coming out later today in a few hours. Uh, but you were also on probably one of my favorite episodes of all time, the Final Fantasy Fantasy Draft, which was what happens when you take Final Fantasy and fantasy sports and cram them together into this hot, like Frankenstein mess, and it turned out amazing. So yeah, go check out all those wonderful episodes. And I would say if you're going to check out Steel Loading, that Final Fantasy episode is a great first intro. That episode great, is yeah. that episode is awesome. Straight up. Not That's just because awesome I'm episode. on it. Uh, it's a great episode. It was a great idea. And all the other people that were on there, that's why you go for it. Because, you know, yeah. I'm just there. <laughs> <They're>... <laughs> well, thank you. But yeah, great episode. Yeah. Uh, go check out both these fantastic podcasts. Uh, once again, I'm going to beat this point to the ground. Go check out all the podcasts that are a part of the King of Games 1992. If you're listening to this and you're a patron, you're listening to this early. So thank you. We appreciate you being a patron. You make the our world go round. You make sure that these episodes stay up on the server, and we deeply appreciate it. If you're listening to this well after the patrons have, hey, thank you for finding us. You know where to find us. But just in case you want to find more stuff, you can go to our link tree, which is linktr.ee slash retro hangover, and you can find all our social media stuff that you want to dip into, including our Patreon. So you could have listened to this episode earlier. And by the time this comes out, probably all those episodes are already out. So, hey, check it out if you're interested. Additionally, you can find us on twitch.tv slash retro hangover, where we stream every Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern time when we play games. So, yeah, show up there. The discussions are wild. They're weird. They're fun, I think. Maybe not. They can get strange, but I like strange. So show up there, twitch.tv slash retro hangover. We hope to see you there. So thanks, both of you, for coming on this episode. Thank you for not advancing Dune 2 and getting me killed, uh, even though that would be completely justified, I think. Cade, Cade did it to get me killed, so thank you, Cade. Uh, he's, I'm sure we'll, he did. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get you off this planet eventually. We're still working on it. Yeah, you're working on it. But with all that being said, until next time, play with your I can't believe it's upside down joysticks. Have a good one. <laughs>